I've really enjoyed your stand up. Had you on the show many times, and you've made these uh, uh, programs for Netflix, these stand up specials. I believe is this correct that you were the first. I think the first UK. I first think, well, they, UK they, they, comedian. They were just kind of expanding. I mean, the incredible thing about Netflix is it really has been, I mean, stand-up's very new anyway, really, as a medium. And it's a great American medium. But if you think about what America's given the world, jazz, the Western, stand-up comedy. Mm. And stand-up comedy was the last of them. It was really, I think you can trace it back to, you can obviously trace it back to trickster gods back in ancient times. <laughs> but really, Carlin and Pryor are, yep. the, are the kind of where most people go to. And then you go, they were John the Baptist. And then everyone since has just been standing on their shoulders. Yes. And it's kind of, it's a very exciting medium. And then Netflix came along. And thanks to Ted Sarandos and his kind of love of stand-up, it feels like the world now has opened up. Like, I've done 45 countries on the tour. It's incredible. Like, you go anywhere in the world. And English has become, I think people speak better English now because of YouTube and Netflix than they ever used to. I've really noticed a difference. It's extraordinary, really. I, it's a great time to be in stand-up. I will tell you that I hear this a lot. You've been with me when I've heard this, when we travel around. I don't know if, you, if you've heard it as well, Blay, but many people when I've traveled and done specials around the world and shot things around the world, people will tell me, I learned English by watching you on the late night show. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. think, A, massive mistake, <laughs> but, but B, uh, that there is something, I mean, you, you think about all the countries that listened to they first listen to they listen to the blues and then they listen to R and B. They listen to R and B records. And in England, the whole idea of waiting for merchant ships to come in and then trying to trade the sailors to get a forty five to listen to what Elvis Presley. What's all this Elvis Presley stuff? Because no one was hearing on the BBC. Yeah. There's this cultural exchange that happens. And what I one of the things that I love about streaming is I watch a lot of UK comedians now. I watch I mean, I, I watch comedians actually from all over the world now, but I also watch television shows, mysteries. I'm very used to, I'm very happy to watch uh, shows that aren't even in English. It is kind of extraordinary, that thing that's happened, which I don't think anyone in media saw coming. No one saw podcasts coming. No one thought podcasts were going to be a, a huge thing, that there was a gap in the market that people, because people's attention spans, you talk to most people, they go, people's attention spans are getting shorter and it's all about TikTok. And you go, yeah, for nonsense, it's shorter, <laughs> but for good stuff, it's longer. Right. If like there's Game of Thrones and it's 60 hours long, you go, or oh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, great. I'll watch 60 hours of that. I've got a huge attention span for it because it's brilliant. Or a podcast where people are having a long conversation, you feel engaged. It's fantastic. Well, I, the other thing is that for all those years that you would come on my show and do stand up, I loved it, but I never got to know you. And what I enjoy so much about this format after doing, I, I loved the other format until, of yeah. course, in your <laughs> vernacular, I was uh, chased out. Um, <laughs> but uh, me too. Let's just call it me too. Yeah. <laughs> Right, let's, let's call it YouTube and just get it get it done and get it out there. <laughs> Sona, was it you? Yeah, it, it was me. Yeah, yeah you, 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 you Sona Blue working with us? Yeah, Blue yeah, was yeah. It? yeah. Well, go, hey, it's a good living. I uh, talked to every single outlet. I was like, very, he's a monster. Very, he's awful. She's the only person who called in a Me Too and then continued to work for me yes. and got a raise. Yeah. Incredibly handsy. Yeah. yeah. He was in the uh, the, the executive washroom. I, yes, uh, but touching uh, in, genitals. In my defense. <laughs> he's own, but still. My own. I'm very a handsy, disgrace. but primarily with myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly all over me. Uh, <laughs> and That's I have, somehow worse. <laughs> and I've had it with this. I've had it with this treatment. You, you yeah. me too. I yourself. got a restraining order yeah. against myself. You got an I too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got I too. I didn't get to do this with you. You did panel on the show once, which I thoroughly enjoyed, but we never could have done this. But isn't that a wonderful thing that you kind of go, it's a, it's a different format and it's kind of, it's more, I think it's kind of more authentic. I mean, the, the great thing about late night, it, it's such a perfect medium. It's again, it's so American. It's so kind of glamorous to me to go on those shows. It's such a, a privilege to do them. But it's it's that thing. I'm, I'm quite close with uh, James Corden and, and yeah. uh, Ben Winston who produces him. And you kind of go, chatting to those guys, you realize, Late night talk shows, the, the 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 kind of the whole thing is let's try not to have a conversation. Let's keep the games going and something else happening rather than actually, you know, you don't want to have a late night discussion program. Whereas these, it's all about conversation. It's really, it's lovely. Yeah. And I what I have found is when I talk to people come up to me all the time and and not just in the United States, but uh, around the world. And they'll tell me, oh, I was just listening to you on the podcast. And they really have a flavor for my relationship with Sona and with Matt. Uh, and they they can kind of, 
I mean, I'll hear about they this. They can sense you hold them in contempt. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Oh, I am that comes contemptuous. Across. Yes. 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 yes, definitely. Yes. Very yes. Day one. Open yeah. about it. Well, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. You know. <laughs> Will you help me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can. I'm seeing Mark Maron later on. Are you being kept for parts? <laughs> it feels. Can you smuggle me out of here? It feels like you'll be. It's like Mark Maron's just got you sort of. You you you're just holding some kidneys. But if he yeah. if Damn anything no. happens, yeah. he is yeah. he is here because. I need a spleen, and uh -huh. you know what? He was hired because he's a direct blood match for me. Yeah. So this is a this is basically an I'm organ just bag. I'm stem cells. This if, is my. This know. is. all <laughs> stem cells. Yeah. This is my organ bag. <laughs> yeah. Matt Gorley. And organ bag, Matt Gorley. Matt, how are you? How are you feeling, by the way, Matt? <laughs> I get very upset when he goes out drinking because <laughs> those are my organs. He's fucking. I'm with. trying to kill you. Come on. Okay, I I must. I must know more about you because I'm I'm curious. A lot of my favorite people in comedy, we all it's rare that I talk to somebody who I really like, who just knew when they were very young and got started very young. Uh, a lot of us, myself included, we were interested in it but didn't quite know how to attack it. You were a bit of a late bloomer. I think, yeah, for comedy, I didn't start comedy until I was about maybe 25, 26. Yeah. And I, so I, I had a proper job first, which is, it's very useful in show business. I think if you go straight from school into, into showbiz, then it's very difficult to be grateful. It's yes. very difficult to appreciate how great it is. Right. And how kind of how fun life is just kind of messing around. And your previous job was working for like an, an oil company. An oil company. Like a big oil company, yeah. So that yeah. was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. You've yeah. never looked back once. You're never yeah. tempted Those to Those guys, yeah, they're still, they're still doing great, right? I haven't looked in on them recently, can but I, I imagine they're doing great. Can I ask you something? Until Mother Earth says her safe word, we can, <laughs> we can keep screwing her, right? Is that not right? Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know much about environmentalism, <laughs> but I know a thing or two about BDSM, and I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm picturing now Earth with a ball gag. <laughs> it's now, um, oh, oh no! Until Earth says it's, it's safe word. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take it right up to the line. Well, I think we did that a while ago. Um, so yeah, uh, came to it late. I think the thing with comics, I mean, I don't know what your your go to is. When I meet sort of comics that I've met before, if we're in a car ride or whatever green room, my question is always, which of your parents was sick? Mm -hmm. That's my. I always think there's one parent that was either physically or mentally sick, and you had to be the thermostat for mood. Mm -hmm. And then the pathology of most comedians I know, and most comedians that I love, is they have to be able to change the thermostat. Mm -hmm. uh, of mood in a room because really when you think about what we do in a room is you you come in and uh you you change the we're drug dealers we're your dopamine and serotonin those are the two drugs we're dealing in so that constant surprise if you don't quite know where the joke is coming you know there's a joke but you don't know when and then the serotonin of the feel good it's it's great and they'll never take me alive because the drugs are already on you <laughs> right it to me it's uh it's i wouldn't uh, uh, sick is a big word uh, and so I don't know if I'd be prepared to say that in my experience, but what I will say is that there's a sensitivity to, um, want, it, wanting everyone in the room to be okay. And, uh, and as you say, being the thermostat, so if something's off or if someone's unhappy or if there's any sort of, uh, you know, repeated, um, unhappiness uh, that, that that runs along. You wanna you wanna try and lift that mood. So that's where that it's a little bit of a, it's a magical trick because you, you can you, you can't see that. Even when you sort of slow down there, it's a really interesting thing that you have. Yeah, this ability to to do that. Where it's that kind of classic thing of like, what do you find easy that everyone else found, finds difficult? Most people in the world find that incredibly difficult right and you just have a natural ability to walk into a room and go oh we're on i'll just light this up yeah it's it's extraordinary and it's weird and very few people have it and yet and somehow and it took you a while to find well what's the career what's the way for me to do oh, this? I, and and if you're like me i i've talked about this but i knew that i could do that fairly young as a kid that I could do that and I could make my friends laugh. And if someone was sad, I could lighten the mood. And if there was tension, I could break the mood and make everybody happy. Never thought that that could be connected to a career, ever. I didn't think the two could be linked. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that thing of like, who thinks it can be a career? If you don't know anyone in show business as well, you're sort of childhood. You go, well, those are magical people on the TV. Right. That's a different, I don't They're know anointed. how that happens. No, it's like saying your aspiration is to be in the royal family. That doesn't happen. Those are people that are living in another world. That's how I looked at it as well. You said, I remember uh, when I got a job as a comedy writer when I was quite young, thinking, well, I can't do this because I can be funny, but I don't know how to write comedy. And having to think about it for a really long time, really think about it, and repeatedly try it and make mistakes in order to realize, no, there is a way to take this thing that I do naturally and make it into words. But it was not... Uh, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because we live in a... I think stand-up is very new. I'm kind of working on a thing at the moment, I'm working on a book about this because it strikes me that music has a language, right? Music is, everyone knows how to read music. You could go from here to Lagos in Nigeria and you could mm -hmm. you could have a musician and they could play together mm -hmm. with written music. There's nothing in comedy. Comedy is like, it's, it's uh, it trying to turn sort of alchemy into science and the idea of going, well, there are different kind of joke types and you, you sort of stumble across it, but you have to find your own way. Everyone getting into comedy has the same story as us of kind of having a machete and getting through the jungle and I found this path and I managed to make it through and I'm very happy I did. But it feels like you need a highway. It feels like it'd be better if people kind of knew how to write jokes. And there's there's a lot of kind of, uh, you know, hucksters out there I trying to know. sell something and they've got no idea how to do it. Yeah, I've always been suspicious of the idea that it can be taught. I've always really- well, again, that's the that's the, the magical sort of, well, I don't wanna, it's unconscious competence. So you have this incredible ability and you're not quite sure how you do it. But I don't think you being able to read music would take away from your innate ability. I think it would just, be, it would be, you know, you'd be able to focus it maybe a little bit, a bit, a bit easier. Right. Uh, but I don't think it would take any of the magic away. In the same way as musicians, some musicians can't read music. I mean, I think Paul McCartney didn't learn how to write, read or write music until he was in his 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then it didn't take anything away. He's right. still able to, uh, he's still got a, a way with a tune. <laughs> um, he writes jingles now for commercials. <laughs> I uh, wondered what happened to him. Yeah, yeah, just for the money. He needs the money. Yeah, sure. But um, He's an older guy. No, but I think, uh, I think there's a lot to it, which is uh, it always has to be play. It, it sh has to be fun. There has to be a sense of play. And whenever I sense I'm trying to think of comedy and it's getting uh, morose or I, it's feeling like a term paper, I've got to walk away from it and then reapproach it. Yeah. Because it comes from... Well, that's the flow state. That's yeah. the kind of place where you want to be, where you kind of go, well, if you can do a job where you, you're in a flow state, that's fantastic. Where you're just, you're not aware of time and you're messing around and you're giggling and it's, it is, it's exciting. Well, that's the best. That's great. The, be well, the best is, and I'm sure, you know, it, is... is uh, just being in front of people and it's supposed to be your job and you're just screwing around and amusing yourself and everyone's with you and enjoying it and you're all in the same place. Yeah. That's, I mean, to but me, that that's thing magical. Of, that's the that's the the high. I think I, I go back to kind of the Chuck Close, Chuck, you know, the American artist, the, yes. the, the pointillist. Uh, he was used to say, uh, inspiration is for amateurs, the rest of us go to work. Mm -hmm. So I think there's something of there's something of that of like when it can be play and finding it in the moment is beautiful. Oh, but you have to happen. do a ton of work to get there. Yeah. Yes. It's the inspiration is the reward for turning yeah. up every day. Yeah. The uh God, we went serious there, didn't we? Yeah. No, no, don't worry. We'll we'll take all that out. Um <laughs> we're gonna just put after you're gone, I'm gonna do twenty minutes of berating you, and right. that will be inserted. And we'll just use uh defensive squeaks for your voice. Okay. And uh, you'll, people will say, well, you know, Conan really got the best of Jimmy there, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're interested, the ins insertion was the reason he was me too'd. <laughs> <laughs> Attempted it. <Yeah. laughs>